Hi, you've clicked on to today's tropical tidbit for Tuesday. Over here in the Atlantic, it's still fairly quiet for mid-September here, just 10 days after the peak of the season. All we're really watching is this invest out here, 98L, in the central Atlantic. We have a monsoonal depression developing in here. It is rather broad now. Last night, what it did is it absorbed a large batch of thunderstorms from its east with a second mid-level center, wrapped that in with the old circulation, and turned it into a larger, broader storm in here and so this is still something that needs to tighten up and consolidate a bit more now before it can be called a tropical depression and the circulation probably isn't quite fully closed to the surface due to the monsoonal nature of it it really needs to tighten up in order to get that kind of a circulation that can be declared a tropical cyclone but it's getting there and within the next couple of days we'll probably have this try to develop and right now it's in a fairly decent environment where it is lots of moisture. The thunderstorms are rather f centered over the area of low pressure. How however, the conditions ahead of it eventually deteriorate. If we look over here to its west, see this little swirl in here? This is old Invest 99L. And look what happened to it. See these thunderstorms that tried to pop to the east of its center? They're getting sheared off. And you can see the exposed low-level center of 99L with thunderstorms to the east. This implies that there is it from the west. And if we look at the water vapor imagery, we can see why. There's this upper level trough north of the Caribbean in here, which is bringing a lot of wind out of the west in the upper levels, pushing these thunderstorms off towards the east of the center. And this kind of wind shear is supposed to remain near the northern Caribbean for at least the next week. And although the wind shear forecasts are not that great that far out, it makes sense that we're going to have this upper level troughing remain in here until we get the MJO back over the Caribbean. As long as that's not there, we're going to have cool air aloft and probably have this trough in here. So the wind shear is going to remain strong in this area. So by the time 98L gets towards the islands, it's probably going to encounter some difficulties strengthening and may not be able to get above tropical storm strength. It's in a decent environment right now, so I would expect it to strengthen into probably a tropical storm but a hurricane probably going to be hard to get for the islands in here, which is good news for them. But of course, keep an eye on this as it's still several days out. And of course, things can always change. But right now, not a major threat for a strong, strong hurricane or anything like that right now. However, rainfall in Puerto Rico will not be a good thing. They continue to get rain, both from the upper low in here. And if they get more from this, it would not be a good thing at all, as they've had a lot of heavy rain already this season. And here are the model forecasts for it. Again, probably moving towards the Northeast Islands in here. And just like yesterday, I like these middle models out here in terms of bringing this towards the Hispaniola, Puerto Rico area, and then up into the Bahamas area, probably eventually curving out towards the north um, and getting on into this area. And with these frontal boundaries coming across like this, you can see one in here. These are probably going to be around the Southwest Atlantic Eastern Seaboard area for at least the next week to 10 days as well. And this will probably mean that this tries to curve up and then get into this area where the convergence gets spread out and again with the shearing we may not even see a strong storm even after it gets into here it may have a better chance of development in here and do a stronger system but we may not see all that much with it in other words this system might be another dud in terms of intensity though again rainfall may make it an issue that people will remember for a while okay here is the GFS ensembles day eight mean sea level pressure in the black lines they indicate isobars in here and then the color shade is the 500 millibar height i'm showing you this in relation to our next worry after 98l we're going to have to be talking about mischief occurring down in the caribbean southern bahamas southern gulf of mexico area like we've been talking about for a very long time now and right off the bat you can see that there's this trough right over the middle of the tennessee valley and again if we have 90, 98l in here it's probably going to be trying to curve north into this trough somewhere in this area if there's anything left of it. But more than that, you can see that with the trough axis here, again, low pressure from basic meteorology, low pressure is going to be to the east of the trough axis, to the right of it. So we see the strung out area of low pressure, a frontal boundary basically over the eastern seaboard. And when you have this here, if all this low pressure is located over the eastern seaboard, there's really no pressure gradient in here over Florida and the Gulf of Mexico. You have about 1,010 millibars at Asheville and about 1,010 millibars, 1,011 in Guantanamo Bay, Cuba. That's a difference of almost zero. There's no pressure gradient over this area. And what this means is that all the air is getting funneled around this high pressure area and all the convergence is occurring in here the surface convergence and then it's getting spread out along this frontal boundary so there's not much opportunity for significant storm development in here and there's no convergence going on in here at the surface that can help wind up low pressure but what we need 
is for this trough axis then to move far enough east so that the high pressure can get up in here. So if we move out to day 13, we do get that the trough axis starts to shift a little bit farther east over the eastern seaboard. And so now we get this high pressure. This is 1,020 um, millibar isobar here and 1,016 in here. So now we have about 1,018 millibars at Asheville and then 1,010 at Guantanamo. Well, that's a difference of up to 8 millibars. So now we have a pressure group over Florida. See this? So all this air is now flowing from high pressure down to this low pressure over the Caribbean across the isobars. And look what we have down here. A 1,008 sub 1,008 millibar area of low pressure on the GFS ensembles by day 13 showing up in here. And then look at how wet it is with the precipitation graph showing up very wet in the Western Caribbean. And then you can see that the corridor of precipitation extends up to the Northeast. And this is almost showing you where this is going to try to go if we get a storm. A track sort of like this across Cuba, perhaps, or into southeast Gulf of Mexico, into Florida, into the Bahamas, something along those lines. The same ideas we've been talking about, about a storm developing in here and taking a track similar to one of these things, doing something like this. And we've been talking about this idea for quite a while, and the time period for this has been marching forward a little bit, but the logic is still here, and the models are showing this, and it's not just the GFS. This is not just a GFS thing. This is the NAFE's ensembles, which incorporate in, and you can see that high pressure develops to the north over the eastern United States by day 13 and 14, and see what we have down here. Sub-1008 well, sub millibar low pressure sitting in the northwest Caribbean with high pressure to the north. Again, you can see the pressure gradient in here. Air is rushing across the isobars towards the Caribbean. And this is what we need because the air piles up at the surface and it gets forced to rise. And forced rising air causes thunderstorms to develop in the presence of moisture. And we get this. And we start to start that feedback process and we can get storms developed. So this pattern definitely favors the classic setup for October developments in the Northwest Caribbean that have a chance to move north and affect land areas from the Eastern Gulf to Cuba and the Bahamas and Florida. So this is something we're going to have to watch out for as we get towards the end of the month and the first week of October. And all of October may actually see a pattern that favors activity in the, in the Northwest Caribbean. So this is going to be the area of the world to watch here. And as the MJO is coming back, I put that graphic up, but I showed it yesterday, how the MJO is also coming back during the next 10 to 15 days, and that will enhance up motion in this area of the world as well. So things are coming together for this to happen, and I think we will see development in here during the next couple of weeks, and we'll see a storm in here that will definitely threaten land, as all storms that develop in the Caribbean are always threats to land, no matter what. So it's a big deal, and we need to watch for it. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.